purpose of these videos and my channel is to enlighten everyone about living in Mexico, what life is like for black expats throughout Mexico. So I have found the most amazing circle of people. I met Bernie in January. Actually, we met online and um, we met in person in January along with Vanessa, who her interview is coming this week. But um, it was just such a cool connection. It was just, what, four of us, right? Me, you, yeah. my husband, and uh, Vanessa. And Bernie's just a wealth of information. She's lived in Mexico for a while. So I just thought it would be very interesting to have her tell you her story. So you can start with telling us your full name, where you're from, et cetera, et cetera. Well, thank you for having me. Well, my name is Bernadette, but uh, everybody call me Bernie. Mm -hmm. So it's a French name because when I was born and raised in France by African parents, my parents were born in Guinea-Bissau. It's located in West Africa, coastline with Senegal. And um, yeah, so I grew up in France having two different cultures because my parents, like they are very connected to the tradition, um, the culture. So at home, we speak Manjak. Uh, so I speak Manjak, even I was born in France. Manjak is my first language. Okay. It's a dialect, let's say. And um, yeah, uh, French is my second language. And I've been living in Mexico for 10 years. Uh, so um, my Spanish is like way better than my English. <laughs> <laughs> That's OK. Yeah. We understand <laughs> you completely. <laughs> so yeah, bear with me with my, my French accent. <laughs> That's and, quite um, fine. Thank you. <laughs> and yeah, uh, also Portuguese. The thing is, the country my parents were born were colonized by Portugal. So, like my last name is Mendes with an Mendes. S. Oh, okay. So okay. The, you can see the mix: Bernadette Mendes, mm -hmm. Portugal, mm -hmm. France, you know, and uh, yeah, and English world well, because I mean I'm curious and uh, I like music like jazz, R&B, and so mm -hmm. movies. So I learn English at school, but traveling also. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So um, tell me a little bit about the language. You said that it's just a dialect. Is it a written language in where your parents are from and where you're? Yeah, heritage? okay. So the official language is Portuguese because mm -hmm. it's been colonized by Portugal. Okay. But uh, there is like a different kind of dialect over there because let's say if you give a name, it's like the indigenous people because mm -hmm. they don't, they, they, they have their own tradition, their own ways to do things. Mm -hmm. And uh, if Manjak, just to tell you a story, means I'm telling you. Because when the, the Portugal arrived, they were like, okay, what are you saying? And they're like, Manjako, Manjako, I'm telling you. And they say, okay, these people, we will call them the Manjak. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. So the, well, in the capital, they speak Portuguese, but uh, they also have like Creole uh, is, a, is a mix uh, between um, Portuguese uh, words or uh, phrases and uh, some African from the Guinea-Bissau a mix, so they call it Creole. And uh, the thing is, um, we have different ethnies, you know, so mine, what I was saying is Manjak. Okay. And Manjak means, I'm telling you, that's the name they give to the ethnic, my parents. Ah, okay. So Manjak me actually means I'm telling you. Yeah, if I translate ah. literally, it means I'm telling you. Ah, and okay. uh, because they were like, okay, this ethnic will be called Manjak because they can't stop saying Manjak. Ah. <laughs> so because okay. they couldn't understand each other, you know? Right, um, right. The thing, yeah, they're very rooted and connected. The Manjak is like, they stick to who they are. They don't want to be like, uh, to transit into the European style and so no, okay. they're very proud. Then the religion speak for itself because um, for more than forty percent of the country they are like uh, Muslims. Ah, oh, okay. The there is twenty percent they are like Christians, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and um, the rest is divided between animalist mm -hmm. and uh, non-identified. Ah. My ethnic is animalist. Ah, okay. Can you explain that a little bit more? Yes, I will explain and I will explain also the connection I see with Mexico somehow. Yes. 
Yes, because the thing is, they um, pray and they, I, they are connected with the ancestors a lot. Okay, okay. When somebody is gone, dead, mm -hmm. they have celebrations, okay. rituals, but they memorize them each and every year through different celebrations and so. Mm -hmm. If you see Mexico, El Dia de la Vida y Muerte, sí. maybe, well, which is, I guess, Day Halloween. Of Day of the Dead on the yeah. first or second of November. Mm -hmm. Perfect, yes. See the way they celebrate the death mm -hmm. is like with candles, is like they bring food for, right. because they know what were the, per, the, the preferred meal or dish of the person who's gone, and this is what they bring to the altar, Correct. which is the place they um, represent for them, they design for them to memorize them. Well, mm -hmm. we do uh, we do it like that. Okay, the same. So, do do they do it around the same time of year as well? No, um, this is something uh, that's a little bit different, mm -hmm. but that we have in common with um, the indigenous Mexican people. Mm -hmm. They are very connected with uh, the, the sky, the, the stars and so on. So they decide up to the energies also. Ah. And if you realize Mexican people, like indigenous, uh, I don't know, different indigenous people, in Japan it can be Mayan or Tomis or whatever, they have uh, the way to connect with, uh, with the universe and so and right. this is the same with the manjak people oh that's so interesting so with the uh, manjak like how far back does uh, that history kind of like affect you or your parents and your family what what time of um what time was that uh well um i, I don't know exactly the thing is i just want to tell you for my mother my mother mm -hmm. she's like well she's african she's from guinea bissau and mm -hmm. uh she grew up there, so that's, she, she has a way of thinking and observing things mm -hmm. different than mine sometimes because mm -hmm. I grew up in France and uh, mm -hmm. I study and I travel and I'm more like Occidental, let's say, mm -hmm. yeah. But like she never connected with France the way she connected with Mexico. Ah, okay. So okay. It makes sense to her. Like, mm -hmm. for example, the dresses, because she likes to, to put dresses on, not like me, jeans and, you know, mm -hmm. uh, cute, uh, I don't know, tops. tops. She's like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she's into dresses and it's not random. She selects the dress mm -hmm. up to the symbol, the, ah. the design on it. Uh, mm -hmm. Maybe is a, is a communication with nature or she want to express mm -hmm. something she expressed to the dresses. And Mexican people, if you go, I don't know, Merida or Yucatan, uh, well, they have the specific dress they have, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, it has a meaning. Ah, oh, that just gave just me goosebumps. That gave me goosebumps, seriously. Um, I just feel like there are traditions that we don't know about, right? I don't know about. Maybe you, you have a closer connection. I do feel at times, for example, I have um, one aunt who is in her mid nineties and there are just these traditions and these things that I feel like are lost or being lost in each generation. And that gave me goosebumps because I do feel that there is a lot to be said for what's going on outside our house in nature. And you know the energies that we don't always realize we absorb in a good and a bad way. And you know, to have someone put that much thoughtfulness into getting ready each day, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like they're so in tuned with things that I don't know that I'll ever be this connected. It's a conscious awareness that I I feel that is lost. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I absolutely love that. Tell me more about your mom. <laughs> yeah, it's like for me, it's like, well, it blow my mind because mm -hmm. she was when I was younger, she she was making her, her rituals and stuff, and I was like, okay, well, interesting, you know. Mm -hmm. From a, from a beginning, I, I'm aware that I'm in a space, but in two different worlds. Like when I'm out of the house, I was aware that there is a certain way to be, or certain things maybe I don't have to say because I will never understand. Mm -hmm. And when I'm in my house, I feel like. Wow, it's the connection is deep. The way she pray and she ask for authorization, you know, before she 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 do something. Maybe sometimes she wants to make a special meal. She has to 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 ask for a bless a blessing and so on. And um, the thing is, when she came in Mexico to visit me, she stay. She came for my birthday. She stayed for a long time. And uh, 
through her eyes, the way she was like, look at this. And she was explaining, I was like, how oh, you know that? Right. I never, nobody explained to you that, you don't watching TV because she doesn't, a school for her is real life. Right. School right. for me is school. Right. Books. Right. National Geography, you, mm -hmm. whatever I see on YouTube, you know, right. for her is none of that. Right. It's what's you know? around her. It's what she observes and it's what's in her, her energy and her spirit. Yes. Yeah, yes. that's so interesting. So yes. what, what sent your parents to France? I mean, how did that kind of come about? It was a challenge, like, because um, the thing is, they, they were like, okay, we are about to do something that nobody did before because there was the first generation to leave Guinea-Bissau mm -hmm. to go to to cross the Mediterranean Mediterranean Sea mm -hmm. to go to Europe, but they didn't know what to expect or nothing. They just know that they've been told so many times by um, uh, you know people right there, in Portuguese people and so if you come to Portugal, because people of Guinea-Bissau, they go to Portugal. Mm -hmm. Normally, people from Africa, they go to the country who colonized them, you know? Mm -hmm. Nigerian people, they go to uh, UK or they try to go to the US because of the language is easier, right. you know? Mm -hmm. That's the idea. So um, you have uh, Guinea Equatorial, they've been colonized by Spain, so they go to uh, Spain. And Guinea-Bissau, they go to Portugal. Yeah. Okay. Uh, in Senegal, they've been colonized by friends, so they go to France. That's okay. the way they move normally. So my okay. parents are like, mm, we want to go to France. We don't speak French. Let's go and try. Mm -hmm. So we can maybe make uh, money and uh, start to build a school, start to build hospitals, because here if they have the shaman, mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, because right. uh, this is the way they heal themselves and so, well, back there, they have their own shaman, you know, okay. Okay. but uh, they wanted to maybe try to give um, more, a little bit of uh, modern experience. Mm -hmm. It was experimental. They didn't know what they were really doing. They tried mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. they say like, okay, uh, we will go and see. So they come to France and then my sisters and I were born in France. And they've been like, okay, the system is not bad. Let's adjust ourselves. So they adjust themselves. They follow the rules. Everything is like, went good, perfect. But the goal is not to stay in France forever. Like right. they have the, they, the money they make. And so they buy land in Africa, in mm -hmm. Guinea-Bissau, house in Senegal and so. And mm -hmm. now they're about to return and live in Africa and stay there in Guinea-Bissau. Oh, okay. So how long have they lived in France? How many years? Um, 35 years. Oh, okay. So they spent a lot of years there just kind of establishing themselves and now they're going to move back to their lands. Yes. Yeah, I because love it. This is where they belong. This is what they like. Right. They can come in back and forth if they want to. Mm -hmm. Now they know that if the family needs something to go, for example, to the capital for a special surgery, mm -hmm. well, they have access to that and, right. uh, you know, and uh, the electricity in the village, you know, mm -hmm. because this is something like super new. We, in uh, 2021 and you know mm -hmm. it's like they're, they're bringing that to give a, an extra plus you know right right so when they went to France I mean did they just like pack a bag we're out <laughs> yeah, <laughs> let's no, just go no. they just showed up and just showed up like, that's yeah, so interesting up. and brave and I guess it's kind of you know back in the day expat right <laughs> Yeah. Just like, um, I need to do something somewhere else and I'm going to yeah. give this a try. That's that's pretty admirable. I mean, I know a lot of people have, you know, immigrated to other places and, you know, they've like my parents were in Jamaica and, you know, they moved to Canada in the 60s and it was just like, you know, what do we do? The, the plus was is that the language wasn't a challenge and I'm sure that that was a, a big challenge. Um, you know, just for me moving to Mexico, I knew a lot of Spanish, but it's still a challenge, you know, so I think having to go to a place and really immerse yourself into the culture, the lifestyle, the language, so you can work and get a job that takes a lot of tenacity. So I yeah, say this to your parents, seriously, I think that's pretty amazing. Um, yeah. So tell me about France. I mean, how was kind of growing up. I mean, France is pretty diverse um, in, in this regard, so. Yeah, well, I was born in Versailles, 
and um, I grew up like you. Yeah, thank you. It's beautiful. Like <laughs> yes, I've been there. <laughs> So you know, yeah. Yes. And um, I grew up around, well, Paris area. Mm -hmm. So it's the capital. It's uh, like a melting pot. We mix. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I grew up with different religion around me mm -hmm. and uh, different people speaking different languages. Mm -hmm. We have people from India, Pakistan. We have people from all up different places of Africa and mm -hmm. uh, Arabic people and people of East Europe. Mm -hmm. you know so for me it's like i i eat different kind of cooking from a young age right yeah because for example muslim people they have ramadan um so when it's like uh, the end well they invite you home so i i go to eat to my with my pakistanis friends in the mm -hmm. house or to my friend from algeria and so mm -hmm. on and for me it's like uh, I'm used to spice. I'm used to uh, exotism, tropical vibes. Mm -hmm. I have a, we have a lot of people from Martinique and mm -hmm. Guadeloupe, which is a French French Indies uh, island. Right. Um, exactly. So for me, it's like uh, normal to see different shape, color, hair. Mm -hmm. This is French. Right. You know? So sometimes when we see like people being touched by strong racism, we're like. Right. It's, it's, you're taken aback because yes, you're not used well. to that. Right. <laughs> they have to justify uh, the, the, the presence and so, and in France, especially in Paris, it's super normal. And right. it's not just a thing because you're, no, even when you're adult, we just mix. Yes. So it's good to, to open minds and, uh, you know, to see bigger than just you and your appearance is like you mess. Right, exactly. I mean, Europe is definitely more advanced in some places than, you know, other parts of the world in regard to just being accepting of various cultures and, like you said, a melting pot in one place where you you'll see everything and it's not a thing, right? It's not like, oh wow, where are you from or what's your hair like and nothing. It's not a thing. People are used to it and there's no surprises and there's no awe about it. <laughs> it's just yeah. your day to day movement. Um, yeah, and I would say for sure, you know, Paris is is pretty advanced this way. I know a lot of people say. Oh, I don't like France. I don't like, you know, the people and whatever. I've always had a positive experience um, in the times that I've visited. I think I've been there three or four times and I've always enjoyed myself. Versailles is beautiful. I was able to take my mom there um, yeah. a couple of years ago and my son and my husband and my brothers, we all went and it was, it was cool. You know, I was just kind of like, you got to see this place because I had seen it. And then I was like, okay, where's, where's my crew? <laughs> Let's go and hang out. Um, so let's move a little fast forward to what brought you to Mexico? Like, um, you know, I know you told me the story, but what brought you to Mexico? Yes. So um, I studied tourism mm -hmm. uh, right there in France. And um, I, I was connecting, connecting with tourists from all over places and so but this is not the tourism I liked. I want, I don't, because in Paris it's like people come, but they have like a budget that have too much different countries because they know that when you're in Europe, it's easy to go to Spain, Switzerland, mm -hmm. Portugal, because it's not as big as it's on the map, I guess. <laughs> so you can discover different countries in a few times because we have uh, like a, fast trains that get you there in less mm -hmm. than two hours you're already in another country mm -hmm. that's how it goes in europe so for me i feel like mm, people come on vacation it's nice but they're a little stressed i want something like more caribbean something like they'll be like oh i just want to come and chill i'm not on the clock i'm not like uh, like running everywhere just mm -hmm. to, to to have a collection of uh, to do checklist like okay i've been there i've been there i've been there right yeah so um, I work for this company called Thomas Cook, and they give me an opportunity to, to, to travel to Mexico and work for them to represent them. So they send clients overseas, and I have to make sure that everything is like perfect. I'm the representative, so uh, I want to make sure that whatever they booked is respected on the contract. I have to, I'm the connection between the hotel and the client, and if there is some situation, I need to, to assist. 
Okay. So that was my, my job was about, but also selling tools and excursions. So that gave me an opportunity to discover a lot about the cultures and, um, and so on. Okay. So I arrived at Tulum first in 2009. Mm -hmm. Tulum was so different from where, what is it right now? Nothing to do. Mm -hmm. it, it was like a, a village, okay. uh, barely electricity. It, it, it was not like uh, the chic Tulum, Bobo chic we have now. Right, you know? right. People, Mayan people, like real Mayan people never saw a black person in their life. Wow. Not, not talking about a woman, black woman working, walking by herself on mm. the street. They just drop everything they're doing, just like to praise you almost. Wow, that's so like, interesting. Wow, so yeah. this was in 2009. That's not that long ago. It was not that. It just explodes, bloomed. Tulum mm. now is like, for me, I don't, I don't recognize the, say, the Tulum I experiment than the Tulum mm. we have now, you know, okay. because now it's like you need to have a certain amount of money to enjoy it as mm -hmm. an Instagrammer. You know, it's more Instagram now, right. which is not bad, but it's different, you know? Well, I think it's a struggle. It, it, it's, it has a double-edged sword because I do think that um, it ends up being a little bit of a struggle for the locals because things cost more and, you know, they get pushed out of their spaces and things like that. I mean, this happens everywhere. Yeah, Unfortunately. the thing is, Tulum has a biosphere called Sian Can, which mm -hmm. is uh, classified by the UNESCO since 1987. Mm -hmm. And on this uh, biosphere, you have dolphins, you have endemic animals like manatees. Mm -hmm. we, you know that this part of the world, we have the second biggest coral reef in the world after mm -hmm. Australia. Right. And all the contamination and, and so is like, we, we, we see the construction we have made and like, wow, it's beautiful, but we have a lot of mangroves in Tulum and right. it's stink, but it's perfect because this is where you have the water get to clean itself naturally. Mm -hmm. Modern nature is spectacular, it's perfect, it is perfect. Mm -hmm. But for our human standards, maybe it's like, oh, it's stink and there is mosquitoes, but it's like the cycle of life. You need right. that for other species to survive and so and people, we destroy that. And now they're talking about building an airport at Tulum, you know, oh, really? because it's two hours away from Cancun, you know, but a lot mm. of people going to there. But for me, it's like, if they do that, because it's protected by the UNESCO, that's why they have a hard time to do that. Mm. But being here, especially in that part of Mexico, corruption, corruption is real. That's, That's why true. I will tell you why I left Playa del Carmen, but mm -hmm. it's real and you can make a way like and right. make things happen. So. Unfortunately, money often speaks way louder than anything else. So, yes, yes I know that's sad. Um, yeah, I mean, Tulum's beautiful. Um, I remember my first visit, which was, um, I want to say it was in 2011, maybe. I can't remember. And um so you were there, but I didn't know you. Yeah. <laughs> I just went for a quick trip. Actually, I went to um, Cancun and then I, yeah. I took a day trip on one of those buses and yeah, Tulum was very pretty. And at that time, there weren't a lot of people, meaning, you know, there were tourists at the um, ruins and things like that. But I remember just like the iguanas chilling and they still do, yeah. but they were just like hanging out on the ruins and yes. the, the ocean was just so pretty. I mean, living in Florida, I see beautiful ocean and also going to the Caribbean and stuff, but it was just so pure and it just had such a nice, pretty color and um, the, the beach was clean and everything. And then fast forward to, uh, I think two years ago um, and it was packed, you know, it was just yes. crowded and I was just like, yeah, so touristy. And, you know, that's what those places bring. Unfortunately, it's an overcrowding. Um, and I think that it just takes away from nature in so many ways that we, we don't understand or, or respect. Um, but I find it very interesting about the whole indigenous thing that, you know, you having a presence would make such an impact on people that haven't seen maybe a darker skin because they're also dark skin right yeah, and but different dark, yeah. but yeah just having like them 
be somewhat in awe of you. I think that's yeah. a beautiful thing. You know, you're like, oh, what are they looking at? <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, it, it was like um, happily curious. So right. it was exactly. very positive. I have to say that because um, there, there are Mayan people. They are we really, we really different. Like they are short, mm -hmm. and this is normal. This is the right. the met, uh, metabolism is just like that. There is a story to everything, you know. Yes. Because they have water from the cenote. You know, mm -hmm. the cenote, mm -hmm. the water is like uh, um, you have a lot of rocks and there's a lot of cal, and the cal on the bone make you like be a bigger bones than the normal, right. and that's why the body is like shaped like that. Right. And because everything is from the food and your alimentation and you. Exactly. And that's the way, and they are short because they're like strong, and maybe right. heavier than than somebody else, like, like they look fat or bigger, whatever. Right. But for them, is the stone, you know. Right. And uh, the body adapt himself to the environment, environment. Also. right exactly because there are people from the jungle somehow because they they, mm -hmm. they they have to walk through like that if you go to uh africa and you check the pygmy mm -hmm. the pygmya i don't know how to say that but there's yes. the way they are mm -hmm. they're shaped because the way of they they move around right and, uh, if you see people from the equator like they have a bigger thoracic cage because mm -hmm. the way they breathe the oxygen is so the body right. adapts itself. Like you go to Mongolia, they have the eyes like shaped in a right. way because it's windy and they're right. So and they have to protect. Is so yeah. powerful, you know? That's so interesting. Um, and, and you're correct and so accurate on in so many ways. When I was in uh, Ecuador also years ago, same thing. I mean, you know, the people were like here to me. Yes. And I found it very interesting. And they're strong, you know, they have you know, the specific cloth that they use for the different elements that they yeah. encounter depending on where they were, you know, if they were in the city, then they were obviously the elevation was, well, not everywhere, but some of the elevation was lower. And then as you go higher, you know, they're just like all garbed up, but it was just very interesting to see the sizes of most of the people were about, I would say at least five feet and under, about yeah. five feet and under. I found that super interesting because at that time in my life, I was always like, I need some heels. I need heels. You know, I, I, I love to wear heels and I don't know why I just did. And um, when I went to South America, I was just like, I'm not packing any of that. This is a true backpacking trip. And, you know, I, I had my sneakers on and I was just like, I know I'm going to feel short, which is so ridiculous. Don't ask me. Young mind, I guess. And um, yeah, I remember just observing the people and it was a beautiful thing, you know, just their, their stature. And even just like yeah. you said, the looks, even though we were in South America, I could say that a lot of the people in um, Peru and Ecuador definitely have almost a Mongolian, you know, kind of yes. look to them yes. as well. Yeah. 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 Because, well, at some point when it was the Apogea, I don't know if you say that in English, but all the continents were stick together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So from the north, it was they were connected, like, and then they come south, south to Africa, to uh, America. Mm -hmm. So it, it's there is a proof that they have a mix between the Indian and the um, American original people. So right, they're, right. they're related somehow. Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah. So people were very curious because I'm, I was taller, right. darker and uh, confident like but yes. very positive like they were saying nice things very nice thing because right. when i arrived i was not speaking spanish perfectly mm -hmm. i was like uh, but what i did i decided not to mix myself with french speaking people or mm -hmm. english just with mexican people Perfect. so i learned spanish the real way so i learned in eight months around wow so yeah but i, I I was there like with the bell because I was um, in a hotel working. So mm -hmm. with the bell boys, bartenders, front desk agents. So I was like, oh, okay, I'm going to hang and it doesn't matter if I understand. <laughs> I will hang there and I will get it and real quick. That's the best way to learn. It is. And, it is yeah. fully, immer full immersion, um, fully immersion. Fully immersion. Yeah. Because and that's, it's easy. To it's, it is not hard. I think it's easy when you, like you said, you set your mind to it. Um, exactly. Because I remember when I went, and this is just me again going backwards. When I was in Ecuador, um, okay. I set my mind to it. I, I really did. I was just like, I had a teacher. It, I didn't really have anyone to speak English to, except mm -hmm. um, one person I was traveling with, and then that was it. 
And I was just like, I need to know how to communicate so I can move around because I was there for a few, like three months or so. But when you get back into the U.S. and, you know, you, you start losing things. But I think living here where I live, it's a crutch. It's a huge crutch, unfortunately, in this regard. It's a huge crutch because, because the language just creates, you know, this ease for us to just keep speaking English or, you know, we get by. And so yeah. I always say, I mean, I know a lot more than I did when I yes. moved to Mexico, but I think that, yeah, full immersion works. So anyone watching this, a, full immersion. It's good to do that. And you did, you did it. So yeah, now you're proud of yourself because it opened your doors. The yeah. thing is, Mexican people, that's smart. Like they feel like, okay, people start to speak English here. We will learn English and we will speak English. Right. So then you don't have to learn Spanish, you know, right, because right. They, they, they like to receive. They are genuine like that. They like to receive They make people to be comfortable. So that's why if you go to Vallarta or mm. I don't know, Acapulco and so people mm. will speak English, no problem. Right. You know? Because they like, the, you're right. They do like to receive. They're, they're curious. They they're want to curious. talk to people. Um, you know, even on Sunday, we were in town and I haven't been in town for a little while and it was crowded and we stopped at a little stall. I saw some things and the daughter of the mom, you know, she spoke English. She just was like, oh, let my daughter practice with you. And then I kept, of course, it's always that exchange where I keep saying stuff in Spanish and then they say okay. stuff. English and then every now and then I have my son jump in I'm like what's that word again because he knows more than I do at this point so it's pretty oh, interesting you, you guys speak Spanglish that's yeah, nice <laughs> mine is super duper Spanglish and my son can literally speak uh, Spanish fluently but it was interesting because the daughter was just like yeah yeah in English and then the mom was me and the mom were Spanglish and then the kids were like full <laughs> both languages it was pretty interesting and then my husband was jumping in with his two words every now and then <laughs> yeah so tell me more about your like living in the Yucatan like I know you started out in Tulum and in, in 09 and then where did you kind of transition to yeah so then I went to Playa del Carmen so still working in tourism and uh, it was interesting because the tourist type changed also because before people who was coming to Mexico, there are people with, uh, let's say money, yeah? yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of curiosity about the culture. Mm -hmm. They wanted to see Chichen Itza, well, from where I were, they wanted to see Chichen Itza, Tulum, Coba. It was nothing with party and mm -hmm. none of that. It was just mm -hmm. like, we want to know about the Mayan civilization mm -hmm. because the way they see the world from years ago, they understood the calendar and so they figured out the time, let's say. Mm -hmm. We want to know about that. And uh, that's why they came. And also because they know that snorkeling is one of the best spots in the world. So you want to do this kind of activity. And mm -hmm. the thing is, for me, it was just amazing because I'm, I, I love culture, I love uh, architecture, and I like that. So I was connecting a lot with people. And so mm -hmm. um, it was very interesting. Cancun is only 50 years ago. It just, it bloomed because Acapulco was a mess because of the narco traffic right, and so right, and it right. blew. And then people were like, okay, this is, um, this is good, but we want something in the middle halfway. And then Playa del Carmen came 25 years ago after Cancun and then Tulum 15 years after. So that's why you can see the difference. Cancun looked like a little, well, Miami style, but Mexican version. Right. <laughs> Playa del Carmen is a mix of uh, Mexican, but more European people going there and the uh, US and Tulum, it was not like, it was just still Mexican style, but now it's changed. But when I was there back then, it was like that. So that's the way you know which destination you go up to your, your lifestyle. If you like um, hippie style, you go to Tulum. If you want to go where there is not big building, but still connected to the Mexican side, but not that hippie, but a little bit uh, modern, you go to Tulum. And if you want modern, you go to Cancun. Now it's like different. So my vision of this area is different from now. I'm sure, because you got there a while ago. So tell me um, when you worked for, was it Thomas Cook? Do you still, are you still working for them or 
when you did, what did you like, what did you provide? I know you were in tourism, but were you like a tour operator or did you just uh, set up packages? What was your uh, Yeah, so the packages were already done by the commercial uh, team. Me, mm-hmm. I were at the destination. So I was um, taking care of the quality of services to make sure that everything is respected as uh, whatever they sell in the catalog because till then there was using a lot of catalog and not much of the internet, especially if you come to play the camera in Tulum, the internet was like not good at all. Mm-hmm. So uh, it's also to um, selling tools and excursion and show people the different activities uh, they can do and discover the, art, the area in a, a, a smart way. So they, they learn about, uh, well, they do the snorkeling activity, they do the, the, the temples and they, they, they go so to further like Valladolid, which is more colonial because there is no beach or sea around. It's more colonial. So you learn about the Mexican tradition and dishes, Mayan style, because uh, the, the gastronomy of Yucatan, uh, which is the next state, because Playa del Carmen, Tulum, and so is Quintana Roo. Yucatan, you have Merida, Valladolid, and so. Well, you have the it, they are very rooted and these people, they, they speak the, the Mayan. So my, my job was to um, make sure people emerge uh, in the culture. Uh, and also, well, there were the activities of the cenote and the cenote, it was a, a ritual to get there because in the Mayan Bible called the Popol Vuh, uh, the cenote is the entrance to the underground world. So, because you born from the underground, and then you have you live on you live on earth because remember the Mayan people they observe and they mm-hmm. come days and so you live to cycle and then you go to to to, to the to the sky the next level mm-hmm. and on 2012 I don't know if you remember there is this uh, theory of the, it's gonna be the end of the world mm-hmm. or I don't know what was that but yes cool, I but- remember that I had one of those um, masks with all yeah. the yeah symbols and I bought one because I was there just before the world was supposed to change and somehow <laughs> it changed yes so what happened in 2012 because there is a stell a stell is like a stone mm-hmm. and uh, there is gravation on it uh with a uh, hieroglyph this is symbols mm-hmm. uh of uh, one symbol means something you know and uh this specific stone was saying it's the end of a cycle and you're gonna mm-hmm. start another one but the interpretation went completely left and a lot of people come to Koba and start to pray and rituals and but mm-hmm. not Mayan people they were so relaxed so this is not the end of the world they were saying to me what is it I'm like I don't know something I don't know the internet goes crazy internationally everybody <laughs> speak about the end of, they're like but this is not the end of the world you know that, that? was called fake news girl <laughs> yeah so they were aware of that and tourist people and so were so stressed like some people were crying like I, I remember I was like what are you crying now because we this is the end this is my last day no it was something it was something I so think the vibe was very different I think it's the same vibe that we had in 1999, right? Going into 2000. I remember everyone's like, oh, everything's going to be off and the computers are going to fail. There's not going to be electricity. And yeah, so I remember we had a party in our basement and I was like, well, you know, at least we're going out with the bang. And yeah, everything worked fine, right? Everything was fine. So and I'm not taking it for granted. I'm just saying like, you know, sometimes we get into the hype or people get into the hype and um, they're not yeah. always being, you know, logical. So, yeah, <laughs> that's pretty yeah, interesting. No, it, but it was funny. Yeah, that's probably. So, yeah, I was like a tour here. operator. Okay, so you're a tour operator. Were you like with a specific uh, company? I mean, I know you're with Thomas Cook, but I think in my mind, I'm thinking about all the resorts, right? They're all inclusive and they have people that work there trying to sell you timeshares and that work on on site providing, you know, group tours and things like that. So you were with a company that put packages together, I'm assuming out of Europe, and then you just were kind of facilitating it on the, okay, okay, that's pretty cool. So, yeah, so tell me about your leaving, because you were there for a while and, um, and then you found Cretero. Yes. Tell me what, what brought you to Yes, yeah, so the thing is, Playa de Carmen, yes. 
Yes, play the comment was very nice until to me it was not anymore the way it were because it grew up. The Fifth Avenue was not that big as it is nowadays. This avenue where you get you go to shopping and so this is what we call the Fifth Avenue, mm -hmm. and uh, we have um, national brands and so. But now um, I don't know shops souvenir, but made in China. And me, I'm more about and craft artists, local artisans, and um, so, and the other I don't really like because for me, we, it's like we are erasing um, the tradition, the culture. This is what people love at the first place. So, mm -hmm. what's the point now of having Starbucks and remove the, coffee, the Mexican coffee shops or having Victoria's Secret or every five steps of the way or 7 Eleven? It looks like that. Like that. And right. for me, walking on the street before the beginning, it was like, oh, wow, look at this girl, she's beautiful and so. Now walking in the street is like a walking wallet. And they'll be like, hey, Rihanna, check my shops, hey, Beyonce. So it was like for me, mm, no, I don't like that anymore. And because it's the new place to be, it's the best place to be to have party. Not about the people don't care that much about the runes anymore, and so they're just like, yeah, I want to be, live my best life, and there's a lot of party and drinking and so that attracts a lot of drug dealers. Mm -hmm. So I was not safe anymore. A lot of corruption. I see things that um, I mean, I don't say don't go. On you go on vacation and so, but to live there as uh, I was doing for me it was not working anymore. So on vacation is perfect. Maybe you won't see what I, I saw. Uh, and that's what I wish. People don't experiment that. I don't want to go into details because uh, uh, it's kind of traumatizing for me because a lot of my friends are also locals and they went through a lot of bad things, mm -hmm. uh, victims. And I didn't ask for anything, but people start to spot me because I make dollars, I make euros. And they're like, okay, this girl, she's making money and people being kidnapped and so so mm -hmm. I want on the for me not doing nothing just doing me people just doing your job realize, and living your life right yeah they realize and they say no mm -hmm. I need to speak with national people mm -hmm. and ask them where can I go because I'm not ready to leave Mexico I love this country uh, there is so much to see so much to to discover and so and I ask them okay I want a place like play the comment in the sense of if I am tired of the city, I uh, can escape easily just driving one hour. Right. I want to stay where I feel secure, security, where people have education uh, in a point uh, where there is university, good college, like good infrastructure also, and healthcare is good, mm -hmm. and the weather is not crazy because also the thing is Playa del Carmen, Tulum, Cancun, Let's say the Yucatan is a place where you get hurricanes yes. every year in season. Maybe not get to a point of hurricane. Maybe it's just a strong, strong rain, storm. tropical storm. But it's exactly. definitely susceptible to, to that, right? It's just like living exactly. in Florida. You never know. And you, exactly, yeah, you're you're there, and it could be just as severe as other parts of the world that gets or experiences hurricanes. Mm -hmm. So I was looking alternative. I was like, okay. I, I, I experimented what I wanted to experiment it. I will go back time to time vacation, no problem. But I don't want to be like, because it's seasonal. My work is seasonal because of the hurricane, people are not coming on vacation anymore because they know that it may be rainy, it may be this and maybe that. So they, they go to other places. And for me, it's like, okay, there is a part of the year I'm not doing money or nothing. For me, well, being curious, I travel. So it's good, right. but I, I, I was thinking that now if I want to be stable, stable for real, this place is not stable. It's like that, you know, and people work seasonal, they know that because there is high season, there is low season. And it's not like a place you have an over option to work on something else, maybe on the real estate, maybe, but there is not big industry, there is none of that, you know, is mainly touristic. So mm -hmm. when COVID hit, no more restaurant, no more park no more nothing and people what they did they went to the city they're from and it was like empty again 
Wow. At some point, wow. at, the, at the beginning, beginning, it was like people just go back to their homes and there is no life again. Mm -hmm. And the Italy was dessert, like nobody on the street and people show pictures on the internet like, wow, what's happening? This mm -hmm. is the reality. Now, if you're in a place more stable, like Querétaro, let's say, you don't face that like that. You That's have true. option. Okay, oh, maybe yeah. I renew myself. Maybe I was an engineer and maybe I can do Uber or Didi, right. or right. you can find a way. There is like the taxi, they have the monopole. So because of the money, the drugs and so, they don't want none of that to get there. So it's complicated. So I feel like uh, now that you start to see all the little details, like mm, it doesn't fit anymore. Vacation party, you won't feel it, but living daily to daily, yeah, you feel like uh, I need to find a place. And everybody was like, okay, you say you want security, good hospital, the place that you can go to, specific villages and town to see touristic activities if you don't want to be in the city anymore. Um, clean Queretaro, uh, Queretaro. And they, I'm like, okay, sure. They say, if you're okay not living by the sea because there is no sea around, you just have to, well, you have to fly, drive and so, but it's not walking distance, forget about that. Then, okay, Queretaro. And I say, okay, I'm gonna check mm -hmm. myself. And, um, and I, I went, I went uh, in September, 2019. So no COVID, so I get to see the Queretaro before COVID. I went by myself four days and I get that again, because at the end when I was in Puerto Rican, people, I mean, they were seeing a black person, it's just like, okay, she has dollar, I'm gonna sell her something, you know? It's, it changed. At the beginning, it was like, I explained, like, oh, wow, da, da. okay. When I came to Queretaro, people were like, oh, Wow, again, I'm like, oh, I've been there before. <laughs> You're like, oh yeah, I'm popular, I'm famous. <laughs> I'm interesting, so, that's but, funny. Yeah, and, but the thing is like, um, people are very friendly, very kind, but it's like the, the, the level of education here is like they stare for a moment and then they move on, you know? They just, mm -hmm. they don't stop and just be there or no. Mm -hmm. They smile or wave or, oh, okay, they make a little comment, but very nice always oh look at this girl she's so beautiful mm -hmm. oh look at the skin color oh i love her hair i want the same you know right, i'm like right. oh that's so nice very friendly, yeah, like yeah a nice yeah. way nice way of saying it so i'm like okay and uh, i wanted to make sure i'm secure so i was walking on the street here there is a program with the government and they make sure there is not such a thing. And they're in play, they come until now that there is that. Mm -hmm. And for me, it's like, oh, wow, this state is like very organized because mm -hmm. um, it's clean, you know, the, the it, I, like I, I drive here in Mexico. I've been driving all my life mm -hmm. and me driving, I'm like, wow, it's comfortable to drive here. There mm -hmm. is no holes, it's like, <laughs> it's comfortable so also yes because you never know that there is a lot of uh, holes of bumping that mm -hmm. not here is like mostly flat so mm -hmm. i'm like oh it's super comfortable and um i feel secure nobody like calling me names or whistle at me on the street right. they don't do that here right even the cars drivers that don't honk at each right. other they don't right. do that Right. Not, not I noticed all. that right off the bat when I um, came. Well, I mean, I've been in and out of Mexico for a lot of years. And um, but when I came for a research trip um, and I was just in town walking around and I did a research trip to check on schools. And yeah, you know, just walk down the road and no one bothers you. No one says anything. I mean, I've had occasional people like one time a guy stopped and was like, hey, I've seen you walking around. Would you like to have breakfast? And I'm like, I'm married. And, you know, he just respect, respectfully kept going, um, you know, but for the most part, you don't get that kind of like subliminal harassment that you can experience in the U.S. or other places in the world. So that's really, really a nice thing. I mean, it's a thing that I think single women can appreciate. Um, and that doesn't mean, you know, you're not, you, you're safe everywhere. You don't, you know, you drop all your guards down and whatever. It just means that you're not really subjected to this constant, you know, kind of immature behavior. <laughs> that's what we'll call it. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah, so that's what I felt of Keretaro. 
that I didn't have in, in Playa del Carmen anymore. Mm -hmm. So I was like, oh, I like this place. I like to dance salsa, mm -hmm. bachata. And I was like, okay, let's see what's going on in here. And here in Querétaro, uh, they dance salsa on the street. They organize nice. themselves. There is a place and it's like, there is no traffic. So it's completely safe. And uh, there is uh, uh, people playing music and you see all kinds of ages, like from children to elders, they just dance salsa. And it's so nice to see that I was like, oh my God. So cool. And it was happening on the late oh, evening. Cool. Yeah, till 1 a.m. in the morning. And nice. you feel like, wow, this is like, I don't have to watch on the, uh, behind my shoulder. I just can be me, I just dancing and, and feel like, alive you know so mm -hmm. i like that about Querétaro and the fact that um there is so much to do like there is museums and like i said there is the, what we call pueblos magicos those are the magical town we say mm -hmm. that keeps a, a tradition or the specificity of the charm of the area and there is several in the state of Querétaro oh, so, okay tell um, me about those i know that you have traveled around and I also want to get to your 4th of July um, wine and yeah. cheese tour. I was like, oh my God, I need to get there. <laughs> I didn't yeah. make it, but um, I would love to know more about that. But tell me about the um, Pueblo Ma Ma Mag Magicos. Magicos. Mm -hmm. Yes, Magical Towns, Pueblos Magicos. So those are the places. Uh, it's a program from the for tourism um, government that they made that up for the tourists to travel national and to stay connected to the roots of each area. Mm -hmm. So if, for example, a place has a special dish or a special monument or is the only area to do that, they might get the title, mm -hmm. which is what we call the Pueblo Magico. Right. And here in Querétaro, the state of Querétaro, you have a difference. You have, for example, Tequisquiapan. Tequisquiapan mm -hmm. is very nice because there is natural hot spring water. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is so specific. nice right now. <laughs> me too. When you go, tell me, because I will so come with you because you're only 45 yeah. minutes away from me. That's yes. Right. Yeah, yes. I've been to Tequisquiapan, but I haven't experimented the um, uh, hot, hot spring water. I went there because of the, the cheese, because there is a lot of... Um, uh, farms, a lot of farmer because the land of Querétaro is very good for farmers mm -hmm. because of the weather. So you get easily cabbage, onion, lettuce, beans. The soil mm -hmm. is rich. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I meet people from Nigeria, imagine, buy lands here just to grow um, chile. Interesting. In English, yeah, chile. chile, peppers. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Just to grow chile because you know back there in Africa, you can sell it like, but because of the land and you, the, the, the price of the land are not expensive right. at some places here. So it's a good investment. Mm -hmm. If you have a vision, Querétaro right. is worthy because there is a lot of fun. Because if to give you an idea, the, the number one milk, milk producer is here in Querétaro. Interesting. Is what company is that? Is that Alp uh, I think or... yeah, Alpura. Alpura mm -hmm. is the one. Mm -hmm. And you have a lot of like uh, livestock, uh, mm -hmm. like breed animals that they have here to mm -hmm. to for production and for the cheese. They they create cheese a lot here mm -hmm. because of the, the. It's it's perfect to to have livestock animals and so mm -hmm. uh, so. Yeah. You have uh, a lot of people came to work in Querétaro. They want okay. to change their life and they come to work in Querétaro. So take it, Skepan, I went there because mm -hmm. I wanted to test uh, cheese, cream, milk, you know, the, the, the authentic way, not mm -hmm. commercial, industrial way. And mm -hmm. it, it, it's very beautiful. It's very pretty. They have this um, beautiful church, pink style. And this is what I like about <laughs> being in Mexico, the colors. One house yes. can be pink, the next purple, the <laughs> other one yellow, blue, blue, so or beautiful. Nothing. <laughs> yeah, like okay, that's, that's very crazy. Everything. Yeah, that's this is true. I always say that. Um, <laughs> I think for you know the lack of whatever they don't have access to in terms of just as a whole. You know, I'm not saying Mexico or the people here are not educated, but I think that in the US, it, you know, there's a lot of, you know, public education, we have free this and free that that's given to us. But I feel like for 
where they're lacking in this regard of going physically to a school through 12th grade, which is our norm in the US and maybe other parts of the world. They are the most creative people that I have ever been around with their hands, builders, and it just shows you that humans can accomplish anything, right? And, you know, sometimes I look around places in uh, San Miguel, Mexico in general, but I live here. And I'm always just amazed at what they use to kind of create something. You know, I've seen walls made out of just ropes and, um, you know, a, a sink in the bathroom made out of something that you just so unconventional, but everything is coming from a place of having a vision that sometimes I feel like when we are, you know, so structured and so put in a box, you know, like learn this way and, and do things this way, you know, you lose that as a child, right? You start to lose just your, you know, imagination. I mean, a lot of it comes from being very imaginative, just having a good imagination and also working with your hands and figuring things out. And I feel that they're very good with this. I mean, I've seen guys building, literally throwing bricks at each other, you know, sawing things with something and just, you know, making it work. And, you know, in the US, we're so used to, you know, and not necessarily you, but I'm sure you've seen it in France. It's like the whole, you know, outfit oh, yes. and the reflectors and the hat, hard hats. And I think all of that's yeah. great, but it's just, you they know, don't do it like that. no, they're just like, let's get in there. Let's get dirty. Let's do get it. it they done. put a cross of a yeah. virgin and yeah. then they get yeah. to it. Exactly. <laughs> it's like a Hail Mary and yeah, let's keep it moving. Let's keep building. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think it's, it's pretty interesting and um, amazing just to see a different way of doing things and operating um, in general. But yeah. yeah, so tell me like what's Caretero like for you in general? How long have you been in Caretero? Um, I guess you could talk a little bit about how you feel the cost of living is different from where you, when you were living in the Yucatan. I know yeah, people are curious about that. <laughs> yeah, we, uh, I'm telling you about that. Um, I will just let you know a little bit more about the magical town because yes, there is yes, like, yes. amazing one that uh, I want people to know about because we are, for example, Peña de Bernal. Yes, I've been there. I thought you were You've gonna say there. that. But go ahead, tell me about yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, Peña de Bernal is um, this place we have the third biggest rock in the world mm -hmm. and uh, it's like when you see it even from further away you're like wow what's this and it's like uh, when you go to Rio de Janeiro and you mm -hmm. see the, the uh, I think we called it the sugar pain love of Rio, Rio de Janeiro mm -hmm. in English um, or, or when you go to Spain and you see the one of Gil Bratar which is the biggest in the world well we have the third one in Querétaro in the state of Querétaro exactly called uh, Peña de Bernal. So right. people go there to uh, walk, hike, to do mm -hmm. hiking and so. Mm -hmm. And uh, on this area, you have a specific gastronomy. Mm -hmm. So if you want to discover traditional Mexican dish, you go to Peña de Bernal. It's completely mm -hmm. worth it, you know? Mm -hmm. This is the kind of magical town that we have. We have, uh, for example, in a more altitude um, way, what we call La Sierra Gorda, Mm -hmm. La Sierra Gorda uh, is like more, there is a river and you can do uh, campings and so, mm -hmm. and a lot of people go for physical activities, mm -hmm. mountain bike, hiking and so. So mm -hmm. my point is, Querétaro is for different kind of people. If you're more into going right there into the nature or you want to see just tradition, mm -hmm. uh, more culture, you have different ways to, to figure your, your way. So there is different. Mm -hmm. Los Magicos, but it's specific of Querétaro. And mm -hmm. well, me, I live in historical center. Right. Yes. And like what we would consider the downtown, like the it's downtown. so, you know, blah, blase, mm -hmm. but um, yes, it would be considered the downtown area of Querétaro. So it's, you're in the city. She's in, yes. Querétaro is, Querétaro city is, it's pretty big. I mean, it's not mm -hmm. Mexico city. But um, I don't know what the population is. You might know that. Um, but I go there at least once a month to shop because they have everything in Querétaro. Yes, yes. And I'm sure that I've said this in other videos, but it, just in case you didn't know. So we're located in central Mexico, um, not on the beach. We are like the heart. Literally, this is considered the heart of Mexico, this area. And you know, Querétaro is a, a city. Um, there are lots of... Um, 
companies, like industrial companies, I think a lot of companies that manufacture parts and pieces for the aircrafts and, and vehicles and things like this. Um, and there's money there. I mean, and yeah. I'm saying that just from the standpoint that where there's money, there's a lot of convenient living and a lot of affordable living. Um, and just kind of the things that I think a lot of people are accustomed to or want, not everyone wants this, but a lot of people want to have amenities. They want to be able to shop at the stores they know. Um, I go there all the time to buy things from Costco's, H-E-B. Yeah, just in H-E-B. case you guys didn't know, there's H-E-B. There's two H-E-Bs, actually. There's even an IHOP, and there's a Chuck E. Cheese, and you name it, state-of-the-art malls. And by the way, I, I thought there were only two malls, and um, I recently discovered that there were more than two malls. I, I oh, yes. found Paseo Mall. I know about Taseo Querétaro, that's right. Yeah, I knew about Antia, Antia, and that was it. Yeah. And there is also Plaza La Victoria, which is uh, closer to the historical center. And there are big, nice malls, like big one and very, very nice. Yeah, um, there is so much in uh, going on in Querétaro. The thing is, it's just three hours away from Mexico City, True. traffic, let's say. So the, what's happened is that a lot of people of Mexico City sick and tired of the stress of being in this crowded city. I love Mexico City. Me I think too. it's like a treasure. <laughs> <laughs> I love Mexico City. Yeah. I wouldn't I wouldn't want to live there, not with a child, I think. But if no. yeah, if if I were just, you know, single. For sure, Mexico City would be right up my alley. Um, yeah. Maybe just outside of Mexico City, but yeah, there's so much to do. It's a great city. Yeah, the, the thing about Mexico City, people recommend it, but they say a contamination and there is a earthquake. I don't know what you call that. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah, earthquake. earthquake. Mm-hmm. So I was like, mm, okay, then and, and that's the thing. Some people they don't want to leave there because of the contamination and this mm-hmm. fear of okay maybe something gonna collapse on me yeah. so they decide to move to Querétaro because it's not far away infrastructure are very good the, gov- the governor of Querétaro invests a lot of money to make sure to preserve the communication between the two uh, different areas and so and um, that's what you say it's a mm-hmm. good job market in Querétaro right a exactly good job market. Yes. yes, there's a I lot of business, that. a lot of business and good living. I mean, I was there yes. a couple of weeks ago to um, connect with Vanessa mm-hmm. and, um, you know, I went into the suburbs. So I was in like El Refugio. Um, what's the other one? Z- Zekia. Z- Zakia. That was, there is El Refugio. Zekia. Right in front is there is Zakia and up Zibata. Zibata, right. So I was kind of driving around that area. And of course, there's Hurakia. Um, yes. And, you know, I went shopping first, and then I connected with her. And yeah, there are so many developments. And just, you know, there's like a development within a develop or developments within one big area. And, you know, there's like security, you drive in, um, mm-hmm. everything. One thing I can say that I was not in love with was that it to me, it lacked a little bit of color, right? Because oh, yeah. in, in, in San Miguel, everything is like so colorful, you know, um, and they're all earthy tones. So I'm so used to like um, the reds and the the um, orange and the brown, you, shades of brown and whatever. The thing yeah. is, this is, okay, is, you're completely right. Um, Querétaro, you, I see it like that. You have the historical center. Mm-hmm. This one is classified by the UNESCO. To keep the title, you cannot touch because you have a spectacular right. historical center mm-hmm. uh, building for colonialism. Mm-hmm. Uh, you have nice squares, covens, museum, church, mm-hmm. cathedral, beautiful, stunning, baroque style. Sometimes right. you can see that. Mm-hmm. At some point, Querétaro was uh, ruled by French, by Maximilian the Emperor. Uh, and there is also a French touch on the gardens. So this is something that people enjoy and love about Querétaro Historical mm-hmm. Center. Mm-hmm. And uh, this one is like, for me, authentic, good, good, good. Mm-hmm. But there is, of course, people who feel like, okay, I want to be in a gated community. So yes. they go to live in places like you say, Zibata or mm-hmm. El Refugio. And because that condominiums, 
they have to follow rules. And this is where you get, well, it's perfect, it's clean, big parks and so, but there is not the personality because right. all the house are kind of look alike. Right. So, it's different style. Now, if you go to Balvanera, it's like uh, more green and it's like very campester. It's like, wow, very nice, very beautiful. Mm -hmm. And they respect that. If you go up to Milenio, mm -hmm. the building, some are, are, are colorful and so on. So Querétaro, the thing is, you can find where to go live mm -hmm. up to your style because there is style. Sure. And this is the thing. It's not just you have one version, which is the historical center. No, mm -hmm. it's like you have to drive a little bit further and then mm -hmm. you have options. So uh, that's good. Yeah. No, that's good to know because um, the places that I've just seen and I don't know the names of them. So I'm glad that you're sharing that because I know several folks that are very interested in Querétaro or planning to move to Querétaro. And I think, you know, we can maybe relist out the um, neighborhoods. I'll probably put that in the description just so people know, like, hey, look into this, look into that. This is what this area is like. I think that everyone has a different like vision and view. Yes. Um, and, and I think in general, the impression that people will have when they get to Mexico is going to be probably a little different than what they expected. And I say that because I remember my first time driving to Querétaro and I was just like, oh, this looks very um, unlike what I imagined. It was, um, you know, very modern. It's, it's a very modern city. A lot of it, I think, is fairly new, um, all the developments. I mean, when we were driving through, you know, it was just like one after the other after the other, and they're all very modern. You know, the, de the decor inside, in terms of the way they're laid out, it's all very modern as well. So I think that people, um, may not envision that they probably envision what the historic district looks like more than anything but yeah. there's everything you can get that and you can also get very modern like for example so in san miguel that it's the same it's unesco protected it's uh the center is very historical it looks older um but they've maintained the colors even with the developments that are mm -hmm. new However, when you go inside, it's very modern, right? You're not going to have like the um, closed homes, maybe where the older homes are. You're going to have pretty much the places, <laughs> the places that are, one second. Yeah. <laughs> the places that are um, just kind of, you know, open. And, and, and in town, you know, you're going to have like the kitchen with the closed in walls and whatever and then out here it's like the whole thing is open you know it's open living so it's very modern so i think just in saying all of that is that you can have a little bit of everything whatever it is you you're looking have, for, yes you know I think, yeah that's so true what you said there is this modern part like very mm -hmm. modern and you can have this very antique uh, i always say that okay when you see the aqueduct this is um, like when you go to paris you have the eiffel tower when you come to Querétaro, you have the aqueduct the aqueduct right, uh, right. I don't know if I pronounce it correctly in English. Yeah, the aqueduct. It's it's aqueduct. yes, that's correct. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is this engineer building that's been used uh, years years ago uh, when the city was growing mm -hmm. um, because there is spring water, but there is not enough water to bring to carry to the city. So they use the aqueduct. Yeah, right. so uh, built by El Marquez, and Mar El Marquez is also the name of one of the municipality of Querétaro. So if you go around El Marquez, you will see the authentic side of Querétaro. Now, if you go to um, the, the um, Central Sur around that area, we have a stadium. And this is oh, okay. one of the most beautiful stadium of the country, like oh, brand new, super nice. nice, amazing. So you can get these two like, wow, I'm in the, 20, uh, the 21 century and I'm back to the 16th century. Like, <laughs> in, two, in two streets, right? Yes. Two those tires. <laughs> and just driving 20 minutes away. But on the you being in the structure center, you won't see that. But just drive a little bit further, and then you have this area, for example. Central Sur is very modern. A lot Central of Central Sur. Okay. Central Sur, yes. Yeah. There is a nice hotel. There is like people to make it like easy to understand. People who want to send the engineers and so they send the people to Central Sur. Okay. International okay. Corporation and so mm -hmm. Central Sur. Yeah, nice. okay. It's very modern. Yeah. And um, if you go, for example, Hercules, which is in the, in the center, uh, Hercules is the first 
um, neighborhood of Querétaro. And this one, you have street art, colorful, all bridges and so, which mm -hmm. is like, wow. And when you go there, the food, you have the different people uh, doing different kind of food. And mm -hmm. it's like, wow, this is Mexico, Mexico. You right. Know? OK, so, I'm going to have to come and hang out you, with you for a weekend, Bernie, because <laughs> yes. I've been, you know, I've been to I've been to Querétaro a lot. So a few years ago, I just drove to Querétaro mm -hmm. with my son. I didn't know where I was going. I just put in. So, you know, San Miguel's so small, right? So when you tell a taxi, bring me to El Centro, they will bring you to El Centro. Well, I did the same thing there because I know there's a historic district and um, I just drove in. Um, I passed, obviously, all the places that I'm used to stopping at. And I went into the city and found a parking space got out and I was right where um, I want to say it was the Art Institute and a museum, mm -hmm. you know, where they have like the Querétaro sign. I was somewhere around here oh, yeah. okay. and I got out, parked the car, had to make sure I got the address so I could get back to my car because I had no idea where I was. And I then I caught a taxi and I was like, you know, he's like, where do you want to go? And I said, El Centro and, you know, historic. And he just kind of looked at me like, OK, this is kind of El Centro. <laughs> and, you know, <laughs> <laughs> me small town mine right and so he says do you want to go to the the pedestrian walkway so we went there and we okay. walked around and we did everything but it's it's a very interesting city so I did that and then another time I think um was when we met up with you guys in January and most of the time I'm just going to do my errands. And then also when I saw Vanessa a few weeks ago, I went to some of the neighborhoods and things, but you can see the neighborhoods from some parts of the highway. So it's a very big city, but it also doesn't have like a overcrowded city feeling. And I don't know if you feel that way in, the, in El Centro or the historic district, but um, it just always feels very, like you know you can get from a to b without being stressed out yeah me being from paris for me is like good it's like oh, yeah. um, not that that uh, complicated or strong traffic but there is of course peak points of traffic um when people go drop and pick up kid from the school now you mm. won't feel it because of the covid but right. before covid you could feel it at some point but it's not the traffic you sit there for 45 minutes and so on no. right it's just like maybe 15 minutes and you're like oh there is traffic and yeah and it's slow <laughs> and but it's not like uh, the end of the world like uh, I, I could say that yeah, it, yeah it's okay it's doing it's doable um yeah, yeah. so yeah Querétaro, i think is um it's it, it's also important for me to say that because if I don't mention that, Querétaro is the birthplace of um, independence in Mexico. Oh, as, okay. uh, because it's the brain. This is where the decision was made, you know, mm -hmm. because um, we have here what we call La Corregidora, which is a municipality name, but we have the statue also. This is the woman with her husband who decide like, okay, we have to ask to the people to stand up for the right because we are mm -hmm. sick and tired of being ruled like that by Spain, the kingdom and so, uh, and they're not respecting. So all the decisions were made here. So okay. in Kerataro, a lot of people come to Querétaro on September, 16 of September, mm -hmm. September, which is the day of independence. Mm -hmm. um, they come, they go, oh, Mexico, oh, Puebla, oh, Querétaro. Oh, yeah? interesting. Because okay. those are the three, like big, the, the, the stone of Mexico. Mm -hmm. Because of those places, Mexico is Mexico. Exactly. You know? Okay. okay I did not country. know that was the birthplace um, of yes. Mexico's independence. So yes. I just made a note on that. I'm going to look that up. Um, that but what I wanted to say to the audience is, is that Bernie's the bomb because Bernie went on one of the other expat pages and she was <laughs> like, <laughs> Are there any people like me on here or any other groups? And I was just like, I love her already. I don't know who she is, <laughs> but you know, she 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 created a page and tell us a little bit about, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, I understand that feeling because for example, I had several people that rolled through SMA, let's say a year and a half or so ago. 
and or even more and they were just like you know is there a group here da da because you know there were other places doing little groups here and there and we were talking before we started to record that when we moved here i'm sure for certain when you moved here in 09 to mexico meaning here in 09 in mexico there was nothing um in terms of catering to people of color or blacks from other places that are migrating to um mexico so my um you know a few folks were like michelle why don't you do like a black sma and i was just like ah, you know i don't know I, I it's not that i didn't want to do it it was just i thought like i'm here how many people are actually interested in this right am i just going to create this and it's not going to be interesting or i'm going to have a thing to be responsible for and who's coming here right but what what have we discovered right that people are interested and if you build it they'll come and it's been very um you know kind of a curious ride to see things kind of grow so when you posted that on and i don't know what page it was but i know you got some flash in feed oh, yeah. <laughs> negative comments like, from you know people like that. yeah like and that. it was a very basic i thought thoughtful question but i was just when i saw it a friend of mine sent it to me he took a screenshot <laughs> and he sent it to me in a messenger and he goes this girl is looking for other black people <laughs> I thought I should share it with you. <laughs> and, and and I was just like, I read your post and I was like, I love her. She's so strong and bold and whatever. Cause I don't know that I would have done that. Cause I would be like waiting for people to, you know, get, why, why do you need that? But what I loved about it is this is here where, this is where we are because of it, right? You yes. took a leap of faith and you said what, you, what was on your heart and you created a page so tell us about that and um also about you know the things that you guys are doing and also the event that you had for the july 4th because i thought that was pretty cool too yeah so being here me i have national friend let's say mexican friends no problem for years because i've almost like i said 10 years here but people reaction makes me question, okay, am I the only black girl in Querétaro? You know, because for me, I was okay, like going market or places and nervous. Me and me, you know, right. I, I don't call it giants for who I am. But the fact that people look back and be like, oh, wow, she's beautiful, I look at her hair and so, I'm like, hmm, I need to ask. Because I was uh, uh, part of this group called um, Ex Querétaro, expat, expats in Querétaro. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I'm going to ask. I mean, <laughs> it's not, I'm not insulting nobody, you know? No, so you I, okay, guys, um, am I the only black girl in Querétaro? <laughs> Just to know. And <laughs> because I'm about to create a group to find out. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and basically, I posted that. And my God, well, I have lovers, I have haters. And I was like, okay, they're coming for me. <laughs> I won't defend myself that much because I know there is people who, who will ex educate them because me, I don't educate nobody. I have no right. energy or time for that. Right. Not, not in 2020, to, in 2021. I think right. you, you have enough resources to, to figure out by yourself. If you're not, then you are, that means you, you want to say stupid and, and this is right. on you. And people educate them, some of them, like, okay, you have to understand, like some people mm -hmm. with, um, similarities or center of interest they want to be together because there is something they want to, to share that will that, that you will never understand the experiment maybe because she's working on the suite and she feel like everybody's looking at her maybe she wants to 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 click or to right. see other people who look like her so maybe she can experiment things with other people mm -hmm. and and some and and there is one of these people who apologize also because he realized no, that so nice. I, I was not realizing yeah just uh, being insensitive Right. Yeah. He said, now I know. It's like, they say, okay, it's like when you have single moms who want to talk with, uh, with, within them, with yeah. themselves, because maybe I experiment something you will never understand because you're not a single mom, you know? Exactly. Or maybe, uh, maybe it's not something that's um, physical, but maybe you're a vegan and you want mm. to be into a vegan groups, you know? Yeah. Or even people, I mean, this Whatever. is not uncommon for a lot of people from Asian countries, they do that yes. all the time, you know, they, they have their own stores and they have their own little community. And so, you know, why not ask this question? I think that sometimes people get defensive about 
things that don't really have anything to do with them. Um, I well, think I, I saw it. some of the comments on the thread, but I was immediately on your page. I was like, hey, I'm in San Miguel, you know, <laughs> and you. I think even um, I don't I don't remember if I had my page already, but I think we both started our pages around the same time. Same time yeah. yeah, I know it was this year. I think I started yeah. it in January, maybe December, but I don't remember. But it's 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 a nice thing because I was able to meet you. I was able yeah. to meet Vanessa, who I'm now friends with, and she's yeah. coaching me. Yeah. She's now living in Querétaro. Yeah. And I've met recently, and I think Carl attended your uh wine and cheese tour on oh, Sunday. Yeah. Um, I met him through uh, another group, but I didn't know okay. he was in Querétaro. And so he says, yes, I'm going to your wine and cheese tour. So tell me how that went. Yeah. Um, so yeah, weekend. for me, my, my skin is not a threat. So I'm like, okay, I'm creating this group. I created this group, you join. And yeah. for me, I was like, maybe it will be 10 person. I don't know because I don't see black people here, but yeah. and. Um, since I work in tourism and so I'm like, maybe we can do activities together because me, I do things, you know, and maybe people that don't dare or they don't want to because I feel like, oof, it's like everybody will be looking at me if I do something or maybe I don't belong. For me, it's like I belong to the world. I go everywhere I want to. Exactly. This is it. So the spirit is for me. So we can do activities together. Mm -hmm. And I try to organize different kind of activities because we are different personalities, you know, mm -hmm. just me being from France with uh, my parents, like from Africa, many of the groups are from uh, USA and mm -hmm. so on. I'm like, we so different. So I don't know who like uh, restaurants, just restaurants, or maybe who like hiking or who like uh, biking. So I'm like, okay, trying to offer different kind of activities. So we right. share the experiment together and it's so nice. I love it. It's Beautiful. not easy to do all that because, you know, I do it like uh, on my free time and so, and I have to be like, come join, motivate people. Right. But everyone who show up, never regret like they enjoy they enjoy that's um, beautiful and, and it's like for example we we had the bike tour because me i already did the tour of uh, Querétaro with the guide and everything but i like to do bicycle and i'm like okay mm -hmm. let's do the bike tour mm -hmm. so i organized that and um while we wandered the bike there was one of the tour guide called anna she was like oh wow i love this day it's amazing I'm like oh wow well, 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 what's the specific reason because she like the thing is I do this tour often but the thing people are just talk by to wave or smile yeah. oh wow this is beautiful they like they see unreal human being like queens and king and I'm like oh wow so nice yeah. to hear that you know That's, the yeah, way the... people respect us and so right. and the fact that I'm doing that like with other black people and people like hey like oh just nice I'm like right. wow if I do it by myself then I think is also positive but right. Or people who doesn't dare, me I dare, but some people maybe they don't dare. Right. Or for them to do with people who look like them and be like, just be you, like be be you. Right, relax. right. And maybe. have a group or just, you know, I mean, you're you're a lot the way I am in terms of thinking about traveling and moving around in different places. It's, you know, you don't feel like I need to be with another group of black folks exactly. but when you are it's also nice you know i mean i didn't move to mexico looking for that i know sometimes mm -hmm. people are migrate or moving to mexico and they're looking for you know a community of, of others that look like them i didn't really come here for that because i in my mind i was just like i'm moving to another country so i'm not really expecting that country to look yes. like the us i'm just going somewhere different. Um, however, what I've learned along the way is that not everyone has had maybe that travel bug or you know just going outside of their comfort zones and sometimes having you know the ability to connect with other people that look like them, it makes them more comfortable doing this this thing, you know because it's a big deal for all of us it's a big yeah. deal but it's a real big deal for some people Definitely. meaning like oh i've never you know i'm scared and i'm I, I, whatever and that's where they get their strength and and lose some of those you know things that maybe make them fearful so i understand having you know the opportunities to do things in a group sometimes like even for myself because i did 
I didn't really do things like this so much in the U.S. I mean, I had friends over, but it was always a mix. It was a mixed bag, you know, it was some of a little bit of everything. And I still do even here, same thing. It's a mixed bag. But every now and then, yes, we do have where it's just, you know, like SMA. And it's kind of interesting. You know, it's fun. It feels like... Um, like a family reunion, <laughs> family <laughs> exactly. reunion in Mexico, <laughs> you know, like where everyone's like reunion. saying where they're from and everyone's having a good old time and we get each other's jokes, you know, that are cultural and things like mm -hmm. this. So um, I think what you're doing is great. So tell me about the wine and cheese tour. Um, I'm really curious to know how did yes. that, I know it turned out well, but what, yes. you know, what did you guys do? What, what did it consist of? Yeah, I really wanted to do this tour because in Querétaro is also famous of, because of the vineyard, you know, they are, they are very good vineyards. The most renowned is Fresh and Nate, mm and -hmm. uh, they have good, good, good grapes, like uh, wine grapes. They have like uh, Sauvignon, they have like Pinot Noir, uh, mm -hmm. they are like Saint Million. So we are in the right season to do that. And for me, I'm like, mm, you can't be in Querétaro and not test that because they have good competition, national and also international bottle of wine because mm -hmm. of the weather is uh, very good and uh, the land is, is, is rich and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, so they, they, they do that. And also for the cheese, because um, we went to this cheese factory called uh, Santa Maria. Mm -hmm. Jose, Jose, sorry, Jose Maria is a cheese factory, mm -hmm. Jose Maria, and uh, we met the owner actually, and uh, he created this farm at the beginning just because he was sick and tired of Mexico City, that's what mm -hmm. I was saying at the beginning, because some people are like burning out out there because of the traffic and so, he was like a banker, he make all this money and say, okay, I want something for my wife and myself, my family, my children, mm -hmm. to have an escape, and uh, he starts with uh, some goats. And uh, the thing is like, okay, uh, we, we don't know what to do with the milk. We don't know how to do cheese. And she learned just like that by herself, a uh, wife. And she created the cheese. And um, she, little by little, people start to give our cheese, um, ship, ship to them. Ship, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. um, and they they they, are, they realize that the milk they have is so good and so, and they say okay let's conquer and see, and they win a prize, and now they keep winning and winning and winning. Interesting. So, yeah, but for them it's super important to be organic. So they have a limited number of animals, and they have uh, they they don't whistle at the sheep. They don't. There is something they don't do. Just not stress the animal. Uh -huh. And me, I'm, uh, this is my kind of, of tourism since the beginning. See, this is me. Uh, I don't like to, to go to places with like a fake or homemade for the tourists. And then when you, go, yeah, when you go, the show is over and everybody, everybody go back to the normal. No. And this is what we, we've been to. So to this cheese factory and we test and it's like kind of a picnic some, at some point mm -hmm. because even the, the chair, the chair, they are made with this. I don't know how to say that in English, but... Uh, um, a, 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 a stock of uh, herbs, like dry herbs. Okay. okay. I don't know how you call that, but the chairs, they're like made with the element of nature and so. Oh, See? interesting. Oh, okay. So, yeah. And you know what else too with the, um, um, that particular vineyard, not, not the cheese in fact, the cheese place, but the vineyard, yeah. um, what was it called? Fren Fren uh, the Fresh Net, Fresh Net um, Fresh yeah. Net. Uh, yeah, the name the name is Finca Fresh Nate, and right. this one is like uh, super renowned because of the graphs they right. have. And the one we went is called La Redonda. La, La Redonda. Redonda. Okay, because I think La with Redonda. the with the first one of Fregnet that you can actually private label there. Um, someone told me this. Someone here is she created her own vineyard, but you know it takes a few years. It takes yeah. a couple years for the grapes to really produce good wine or quality wine um, and she's already created her brand and you know that's something that has come up at least for myself over the years I've always been kind of curious like how would I private label and you know create my own bottle so I'm just putting it out there because that one in particular I've heard they they do allow people to come I don't know if there's a limitation on how many bottles you can buy um, but you can I'm, I'm assuming it, there is no limitation be. but you can 
private label. So if someone's interested in private labeling, that that's an option for them as you, well. You can only sell what you have. The, I think you 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 because the way you you produce your wine, then you have a number of bottles you can because you don't know. Uh, because there is evaporation and you don't know how the season is going to be, it's not exactly. predictable, so you can only sell the amount that you have. And also sometimes you want to, to, to leave your wine, get older, because the older, the more value it gets and the exactly. more flavor it gets because right. of the specific recipients it's been mm -hmm. on. And so, mm -hmm. and also, well, depend that's all that. It, it, it's very regulated. There is a regulation for that, you know? Yes, and uh, you have your workers being there to test the temperature, the, mm -hmm. the, everything has to be. But I think it's interesting, of course, that people have opportunity. This is a land of opportunity. It so it is. is. And, and, you know, I, I'm trying to um, find ways, and this is something that's really on my mind right now, for us to kind of like build a community on my other page, which is um, Black Owned in Mexico. Oh, I loved it. Just, yeah. you know, I mean, I created that as well right around the same time as Black SMA because I just yeah. found myself, you know, finding it hard to just find things, products that we are used to, things for our hair, people to do our hair, uh, you know, braiding hair, just. You, it wasn't really about necessarily buying from them, but more of a resource, you know, yes. creating the space for resources. So in saying all of that, you know, I, I'm currently speaking to, and, and you're certainly welcome to join in on the conversations with several people who we are just thinking like, what can we do to create the wheel rolling, turning, where people can think of things outside of their norm because i think a lot of mm -hmm. us coming from the us we're mostly used to working for a job a company yes. a nine to five and a lot yes. of folks are always asking that how do you make money in mexico how do you you know whatever and yes some of us are everyone has a different scenario but i do think that there's a lot of opportunity here it's just kind of like putting the mind in that space where you can think of you know do you are you a farmer have you always wanted to farm there are some people who never thought that they could do this and they maybe want to you know I don't want to but hey maybe one day I'm just going to get land and I would love to grow grapes I would love to try to do wine I love drinking wine so yes. hey you know if I can yes. pick my own wine <laughs> why not you know so I why feel not? like those are opportunities where people can group together and possibly do something together you know there are um, women that are doing this um, I recently saw this I think in California so why not Mexico? The land is why so not? inexpensive here. I mean, yes. I have friends who recently bought a hectare of land and it was all of 20,000 US dollars, yeah. you know? And, and it's expensive. rich land. It's and it's taking value. This exactly. is the best investment ever you can do to yourself. Like Absolutely. nobody knew that Queretaro will be the way it is right now, 30 years exactly. ago. Exactly, Nothing same do. thing with San Miguel. I mean, See? there's so much land even surrounding, like you said, you can drive, here you can drive 10 minutes and there's just land forever mountains and lands in any direction you go okay there's set central and then there's the outside of central and then there's land and it just mm -hmm. goes on and on and on and on until we get to Querétaro there's so much land in between here and uh, that's Querétaro right. that's why you just see mountains and it's country and some people want that you know not everyone wants to be in a city so um, I think, you know, taking these opportunities to think outside the box or even create uh, roundtables on Zoom where people can talk about ideas and opportunities, especially mm -hmm. if you're not here physically, these are also conversations I think that should be had. You know, one person can't do it all, two people can't do it all. And I think when you come together yeah. and you create you know, those synergies that there are lots of opportunities that we can come up there with. There is a lot. And Tons. as you say, you don't have to be here because, um, for example, my sister, she has her own brand, famous now, you know, you can see it on uh, uh, Galerie Lafayette in France, mm -hmm. which is like a like good, good brand. Like the one of the highest uh, shop you can have it is like I'm telling you. Okay, well she is in Sephora, but the top level of Sephora, ah, and nice. she's like in the in England, ah. she's in France, and how? Because there is a, a tree here in Mexico called Tepescoit. Mm -hmm. Tepescoit is well known 
because when you burn yourself and you use the, the branch uh, of uh, this tree, you can mm. heal faster than the normal. Mm. Oh, the, prior, the properties of this tree is like spectacular. And when there is like um, earthquake and so, a lot of people that heal themselves, the burns and so, with the Pexcovite. Salma mm. Ayak, the, mm. the actress, mm -hmm. she talked about that, you know? And my, my sister, she created organic products with that. And the, she gets so much recognition about that, and she's about uh -huh. to, land, to land in Sephora US now, and, uh, and uh, Canada and Mexico, because they go together. Beautiful. So now she, yeah, and because she came in Mexico, mm -hmm. she visited me, and she's like, because she always, because my mother, like I said, because of her African roots, she, she created her own product and so, right. and my sister, she get that from her. So when she came to Mexico, she, she, she gets so inspired by that. By, by Mexican people and, and she decided to create uh, a brand and now she's on the next level. Wow. Now now, well, yeah, congratulations so. to her. I would love so, to hear more about that, but yeah. yeah, no, this has been so great, Bernie. I know that you were a little hesitant, but I'm thankful to you for you. getting on, sharing everything. Um, you know, she has a page. What's it called? Queretaro, Blacks in Queretaro. Yeah, Black Expats in Queretaro. Black Expats in Queretaro. Yeah. It's also for people who don't dare to come or feel like, oh, I'm stuck to where, where I am. And uh, they don't see that, okay, there isn't a place in the world you are accepted for who you are, not mm -hmm. for what you've been told you're supposed to be. And exactly. so I want people to, to see that, oh, okay, it's possible for mm -hmm. me to leave my place that I hate so much or I don't feel secure and to start over mm -hmm. with, in a place of opportunities because I see people look like me doing it. So that, that's also absolutely. The and that's exactly why we're all here. Right. And I think that, you know, we all have somewhat of a pioneer spirit, but I also feel like we, we should have a little bit of um, the responsibility to share, you know, this information and is why, you know, we do what we do. Cause it is, like you said, it is time consuming, you know, you're not making money from this and I didn't start it to make money from this. I just, felt the obligation to really give people insight. You know, I did not have this. I mean, I think the only site I found when I first got here was uh, Carolyn Membrano, and that was the Black Mexpac community. And I was so excited about it. You know, I was sharing it with people. Anytime I would see someone ask a question about Mexico and some other group, yeah. I would, you know, hey, join this, join that. And now we've got in very specific where there are pockets of us all over Mexico and there probably is a group you know there's one in Oaxaca there's several yeah. in Merida there's one in Tulum Cancun Mexico City um, Queretaro now San Miguel um, the, my friend recently started one in Mazatlan and yeah. Oaxaca City and it just goes on and on and I think that even when we think, oh, there's only going to be a few folks and it just keeps growing and growing and growing. And even if people don't land there, it's good for them to know that you exist because when you do travel, if you decide, like if I know when I go to Queretaro, I'm going to connect with you, right? I, and other people may reach out to you and you never know where that might take you. It might be a business later on where, you know, you're providing tourism and you never know, yeah. right? We just do what we do. So I'm so appreciative for your time and also for you kind of like coming <laughs> outside of your comfort zone. I really thought this was a very amazing, interesting uh, conversation in general direction from where you came from, you know, the viewpoints of your family um, having kind of similarities with Mexican culture. And, you know, just fast forwarding to where you are now. And I'm so happy that I know you, know you, not just online, yes, know you. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so I want to go to the hot springs. So please let me know more about that <laughs> and hang out a little bit in some other areas in Queretaro yes. and um, also just come, you know, do like a quick uh, weekend trip and spend some time together. And Vanessa, she definitely is looking forward to doing like a 10 minute scale. And I'm all about that. Yes, yeah, like yeah, let's yeah. do that. Maybe we can combine the hot springs together with that. Very
I love you. Thank you, Michelle, for everything thank you that so you've much, been doing Bernie. for the community. Oh, thank you so, so you. much for joining me. And um, I will post and put any information about, you know, your tour, your group, and anything else you want me to share in the description box below. Okay. Thank, thank you, you so, so much, much Bernie. Yeah. I appreciate Thanks you. To you. We have to see each other soon. Thank you. We will, we will for sure. <laughs> have a blessed day. Besitos, abrazos. <laughs> Cuídate. Hola, Ciao. amigo. Ciao. Bye. -bye. Bye.